this is how the folder of a typical Node.js project will look like, give or take a couple more files, couple less files. Okay, so what I my idea is I will archive everything that I need in this folder, put it inside of a single file, then I will copy this file through SCP to the remote host, right? Because it will be much easier for me to copy a single file instead of a bunch of small files. And then on that host, I will install the dependencies and run the project with Yarn and NPM. Okay, so how it will look like. You can archive the project in any way you like. You can just right click in GUI. Uh, I will just stick to a command line because it will then be easier for me to automate the whole process with the help of a shell script. So what I'll do, tar is the command to archive uh, several files inside of a single archive. So then the parameters C for compress, we want to compress, Z for zip, and F for file. So now we need to provide a file name. So we're compressing something to a file that will be called easyio tar gz. Okay, now what are the files that we will need? We will need these guys, main.js, package.json, yarn lock, uh, deploy sh, uh, we will talk about this script a little bit later, but we don't need it. Node modules, we don't need it because we will get it from the server. And public is the place with our public HTML, obviously we need that as well. So let's take those main.js, package.json, yarn lock, and public. You can also add license if you like, right? So let's, let's add license. Now let's hit enter and now I've got this little archive, easy IOTAR GZ. Now we need to transfer this file somehow to our remote server. And to do that, I will call a command called SCP secure copy. It copies the local file to remote or remote file to local. So we need to start from local file because that is the thing that we will be copying. Easy IOTAR GZ, where do we want to put it? We want to put it to our server in a home folder. So we put colon and tilt. And notice that usually the format would be like this, Yuri at 188.116. But since I set up my SSH user to be the same on my local machine on, and on the remote machine, I can just get rid of this part. And then my SCP will just run. Also the key is used properly, so I don't need to add any additional information to copy the file over. On the remote server, I need to extract this file. And we do the same command here, tar, tar but instead of compressing, we put X to extract and F for file. And you put the file name, right? But it will now in take all the contents of the archive, all the files, and just put it into the home folder, which is not nice. What I want to do is I want to first create a folder, call it easy IO, and then run this command to extract this file into the folder called easy IO. Now let's go to that folder and make sure that we've got our files there. Okay, awesome. License, main, package JSON, public, and yarn lock. The next thing to do is to run the application. So I'll run yarn install to download and build the dependencies. And now I can run npm start because I have the start script inside of my package JSON to run the application. Okay, so now, now application is running and I can check that it is running by going to that IP address that I had somewhere in a buffer, somewhere I had that IP, here it is. So let's go there and see our glorious application in action. Now Easy IO is measuring the round trip time between my local machine and the server, so that means the application is running. Now, what is the biggest downside of this way of deploying application? Let's say I decide now to close my uh, console. I, I went for lunch or something, so I close my console and uh, yeah, I logged off. This application is not running anymore, right? The site is not reachable. Why? Because we had Node.js working in our logging shell. And once we logged off from the server, turns out that Node.js has been closed as well. So how do we make our site running even if we log out from our server? That's the way to do that, right? Uh, well, we will use an application called PM2, a tool called PM2 you know, that will manage the application for us. So let's connect back to our server. Now, what I will need to do is I will need to run PM2. I have PM2 installed already. This one is the global dependency. And I'll say start. And now I'll give the name to running application to make sure I can distinguish them. Maybe I've got many of them. Easy IO. 
This name can be anything that will tell you which application is actually running. And now I'm saying which, oopsie, which file is, should I run? Main.js, but I first had to go to the folder with, uh, with that file, obviously. So let's go to easy.io and then paste this line. PM2 start name easy.io main.js. Okay, PM2 will do something, print some beautiful graphics, and now it says that EasyIO is online, right? To check what are the applications that you're running, you can execute PM2 LS for list. It will give you the list of the application. So it looks like this application is fine. Let's make sure that it works properly. Let's not believe straight away that it will just work. Let's log off from this server. Now we close the connection. Let's go to our browser, let's refresh this page and see that Socket.io is responding, our HTML is served and generally our application is, well, it's, it's working, right? So now application is deployed and uh, at this point it will be running until you shut down the server. The only thing that I still don't like with this setup is that if I restart the server, PM2 will not start automatically. Now in order to control the startup process of server and the services that are executed on the startup, you need to be root. So I disconnected from from my URI user, that is not root. And I will now reconnect back to the server as root because I can't do sudo because my user doesn't have any rights at all. It's secure, but it doesn't have any rights. Okay, awesome, so we are now root. So what we need to do is to tell PM2 to add itself to a startup sequence and there is a special command for that. We type PM2 startup now we need to tell PM2 to give it a hint. What is the startup system that we are using? PM2 will try to find it out automatically, but it didn't always work for me very well, so I just prefer to tell it straight away. We are using a startup system that is called System D. This is a startup system on CentOS distributions, at least on recent ones. And now we will tell the username that will be used to start PM2, and also we will tell the home path, the path to the home folder of that user. And the user is living in home, Yuri. Now let's hit enter. And it looks like everything is great, right? So we can also freeze a process list on reboot, right? So let's become back our user. sudo su Yuri. Let's see that our PM2 is still running our application that we want. Now we need to call PM2 save. PM2 save will create a special file that has all the state of the running applications saved and it will rerun those apps. Actually, the, the state of the application itself will not be saved, but PM2 will know which application to restart once you restart the server. Okay, PM2 save. Successfully saved in home your PM2 dump PM2. Awesome, and now technically we can reboot the server. And it's always a bit unsettling experience when I reboot a remote server, I usually don't. But just for the sake of demonstration that we see that it works, let's do shutdown minus R to reboot and now to do that straight away. Let's hit enter. And let's copy paste our IP address. The server is being rebooted. And if I did everything correctly, this application should soon restart. Let's see if it restarts, not yet. And in just maybe 10 seconds, the application has started and you see that PM2 made sure that after the server is restarted, your app is back online and your round trip times are there already. So this is awesome. Now, whatever you do to your server, you have a very nice and clean way to manage your application with a help of PM2.